Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. This is related to the system interactions section on the exam. So as we go through this podcast, the goal is to go through each of the content outline areas or the body systems and focus areas of the NPTE's content outline. Today is no different. We'll be talking through the system interactions section of the exam. This is dedicated almost entirely, well, it is entirely to the evaluation, differential diagnosis, and prognosis of individuals across systems, or I guess you could say pathologies that cross multiple systems. And so uh, that's our goal today is to talk about system interactions. But before I get to the practice question for today, just, just a couple of real quick announcements. Number one, if you still want to jump into our crash course, it's not too late. You'll want to hurry because we're getting going. We meet twice a week going over musculo, cardio, and neuro practice questions in addition to an accelerated curriculum that we've got. So it's all video library plus our live sessions on practice questions to give you not only the content, but the strategies to succeed on test day. So that that's going on right now as we speak. You'll want to check that out, ptfinalexam.com. Just once you sign up for the crash course, you, you won't want to miss that. It's definitely something worth spending some time with, especially as we head closer and closer to test day. You want to make sure you have not only the content, but also the tools to answer those questions correctly on test day. Secondarily, I've got a couple of great announcements. I, I guess I'm going to tease you on one, but I've, I'm ready to, to tell you about another one. One of the other great announcements I've got is that if you're looking for a way to get into the PT Final Exam VIP program for free, there is only one way to do it. You've got to sign up at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast and register for our free in-person training in Chicago in November. So that's Chicago 9th and 10th. Uh, it's Friday, Saturday. Uh, you have to get yourself to Chicago. Once you can get yourself to Chicago, uh, the housing is covered, the course is covered, plus you'll get free access to the VIP course that we do, we run twice a week. Uh, so it, it really is the most robust way to prepare for the exam. And it's yours totally free. Like I said, the, the two day event is free. Uh, the, the VIP content is free. You get complimentary access to the crash course. We've got six full practice exams. And can I emphasize there, six full practice exams. That's a lot of fun where we've got scenario-based questions. We've got the full exam simulator experience. You can create quizzes. Uh, you won't find a better bang for your buck when it comes to practice questions, content, not only video content, but live content. We talk through really not, again, not just the content material, but also the strategies to make your test day experience as seamless and as stress-free as possible. So I guess I won't guarantee to take away all of your stress, but I will guarantee that we'll give you the tools to succeed on test day, to get that score that you deserve on test day. So again, the best way to sign up for that, a totally free event, you just have to get yourself to Chicago on November 9th and 10th. Best way to do that is to go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you'll be able to click through the link there. That'll take you through to the sign up form. You've got to, again, register. The seating is extremely limited. And again, it's it's an in-person event. So we only do a few of these in-person events for the public each year. Uh, plus we do this, I mean, we have done this many times for university partners. And anyway, this is one that we've opened up to, to the public. So you can, if you can get yourself to Chicago, you can have access to this totally free course. Plus you'll have access to our VIP course, all of our video content, our practice exams. Uh, pretty much the whole nine yards, you'll get access to that. But again, you must go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast to register. And I very much re recommend that you register sooner rather than later because we are going to run out of spots extremely quickly with a deal this good. I mean, how, how much better can you get? It's totally free. I want to thank the folks over at, at Athletico for sponsoring the event. Uh, they're the ones that are uh, helping to facilitate everything. And so I think you'll I think you'll really appreciate not only the NPT content. There's some debt relief content that that we'll talk about here uh, at that two day event as well. So talk about how to get through your get out of your student student loans as quickly as possible for as little as possible. And I think that's uh, we all have that same goal, right? So to get out of student loans as quickly and as cheaply as possible, um, yeah, I, I, you won't want to miss it. So again, ptfinalexam.com/podcast extremely limited. 
So make sure to sign up as quickly as possible. And then the other thing I'll tease is that here in November, we're gonna be rolling out a very special project. So you'll wanna stay tuned. Uh, we've got some super early bird pricing and some fun stuff, some perks that you won't wanna miss. So again, stay tuned to the podcast for that. It's just a little teaser. So now you're wondering what in the world is Will up to these days? Well, we, uh, what do you wanna say? We leave no stone unturned. Trying to help you prepare for the exam in the most effective, evidence-based way possible but also try, I guess the, the one, little, one little teaser I'll give you is that it's going to be fun. I can guarantee that it's going to be fun and game-based. So yeah, a lot to look forward to there. So again, and the easiest way to just go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, and that's the easiest way to stay tuned for updates. Plus that's where we'll be sending out our, our first, yeah, all, all the first look on everything. So that, that's where you want to be, ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. So not to belabor the point, but let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. So the question again today related to system interactions, as per usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we will talk about it together. Here we go. A patient with low back pain and limited trunk flexion is being evaluated by a physical therapist. When performing the straight leg raise test, the clinician notes a unilateral tightness of the left hip as compared to the right. The clinician then performs passive hip flexion with the knee bent and observes no change in the left hip flexion range of motion. Which of the following pathologies is most likely present? So again, we've got a patient with low back pain, limited trunk flexion being evaluated by PT. When performing the straight leg raise test, the clinician notes a unilateral tightness of the left hip as compared to the right. The clinician then performs passive hip flexion with the knee bent and observes no change in the left hip flexion range of motion. Which of the following pathologies is most likely present? One, hamstring tightness. Two, hip capsule restriction. Three, lumbar spine hypomobility. Or four, sacral fracture. So again, the options are hamstring tightness, hip capsule restriction, lumbar spine hypomobility, or option four, sacral fracture. So this is one of those it fits maybe more precisely in the musculoskeletal section, but you're not quite sure where to put it, whether it be in the hip or the sacrum. And frankly speaking, in the musculoskeletal system, it could also fit into the, I guess it does, it fits mostly into the, the musculoskeletal system as far as categorization. That's where you'll find it in the textbooks. But it does also have some broader systemic interaction considerations, especially when you consider that this is a positive sign of the buttock. So it's kind of a funny name, the sign of the buttock, which is not, it has a little bit to do with the buttock and it's not just one sign. So it's a little bit of a misnomer of a test. And I think that's why students struggle with it is that the sign of the buttock it is really looking at non-musculoskeletal, non-classic, non-restrictive uh, range of mo non, <laughs> how do I wanna say this? Non-soft tissue, range of motion restrictions that are, are coming from an outside source. And so the correct answer is that sacral fracture. All that to say that the sign of the buttock, this is indicated when you have limited hip flexion, limited trunk flexion, and a limited straight leg raise, but with no capsular pattern of restriction. So there's no hip capsule that's indicated, no loss of internal or external range of motion. Uh, the, usually what's observed here is that you perform the straight leg raise test, and then you bend the knee or you flex the knee and re-perform hip flexion. If the range of motion is not changed or improved, that indicates that there's something deeper going on. And so on the list, there's several things on this list. It includes a sacral or pelvic infection or fracture, uh, septic bursitis, gluteal hematomas. Uh, so I guess in some ways you could kind of fit this under the, the um, I guess you yeah, in the cardiovascular, so if there's a hematoma going there. Uh, ischio, let's see, ischio re <laughs> ischiorectal abscess, that's a mouthful, tumor, and osteomyelitis, just to name a few. So you could have some type of bony infection, you could have a hematoma, uh, some type of bursitis, septic bursitis, something going on where you have this posterior hip restriction, but it's not related to the capsule. And I, I think that's the key here. It's it's not related to the muscles or the capsule necessarily. So it's not a 
uh, it's not a hip flexor problem, so it's not a hamstring issue, uh, nor is it a, well, I'm sorry, that's a hip extensor. It's not a, a, a soft tissue restriction as far as muscular restrictions go, nor is it a capsular issue. Rather, it's coming from something a bit more complicated, such as osteomyelitis, fracture, uh, some type of infectious process. All that to say, this is what's considered the sign of the buttock. So you as a PT, if you observe the sign of the buttock, which is typically observed by performing the straight leg raise test with the knee extended, and then performing it again with the knee flexed, and if there's no change in hip range of motion, then that tells you that there's something deeper going on. And so you'll want to make immediate referral back to the referring physician, just because this is uh, clearly beyond the purview of our of physical therapy. Uh, it's something like osteomyelitis, obviously you're gonna require some pretty significant pharmacological intervention and interdisciplinary team intervention. So you as a PT, you'll do your very best to screen for this. And then once you've screened for it, make appropriate referral. So again, just to boil it all back down, that you perform the straight leg race test. So you got the straight leg, you're, you're going up into hip flexion. You go to a certain restriction. You should be able to go farther into hip flexion with the knee bent. I mean, that's just anatomically speaking. Once you remove the, the hamstrings out of the equation by flexing the knee, then you can move the hip into farther hip flexion. However, by flexing the knee, if there's no change in range of motion, that tells you that you have restriction coming from some type of extra, extra capsular issue. And the most common being like a, a sacral fracture, sacral pelvic fracture. You've got gluteal hematomas, septic bursitis, sacral pelvic inf infections, uh, osteomyelitis on the list there. So this is what's considered the sign of the buttock, which would indicate referral back to the primary care provider. So medical referral would be necessary in the case that you observed a positive sign of the buttock, which again, sign of the buttock, a bit of a misnomer because it's not necessarily in the buttock, I mean, kind of, but it has you about seven different signs, so it's not a singular sign. But the most common one we focus on is that lack of hip flexion, restriction of hip flexion that is observed both with the knee flexed and extended, you see no change in hip flexion range of motion. So there you go. There's our system interactions question of the day. Uh, so this is, again, as we go through the FSBPT's content outline, you'll see that this fits in, there's somewhere between eight and 12 questions related to system interactions. And this definitely fits into that category. All right, so with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion here today. I hope you have a fabulous day. Take good care of yourself as you're studying. I know that you've got a lot on your plate. My goal is to be as helpful as possible. So if you do have any questions or requests for the podcast, just head over to ptfinalexam.com slash contact, and we'll do our best to, to get your, your request on the podcast. So, all right, we'll bring it to a conclusion. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Keep a grin on your chin. We'll crane fist pumps all around, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks, everyone.